welcome back to the Now Morning Show here on TTT. I am Natalie Legor, and in studio with us this morning is the Minister of Public Utilities, Marvin Gonzalez, the Member of Parliament for Lupino Bonaire, and he's here to talk to us not so much about TSTT and the other utilities, but the Water and Sewage Authority. I know yesterday we had the Executive Director, uh, Dr. Lennox Seeley, but you know what, we will have a part two with him, but we just wanted to get the minister's perspective, especially about what we've learned over the last couple of days, which is the president of the Public Servants Services Association, Mr. Watson Duke. That is why his wife has been getting some lucrative contracts from the, from the Water and Sewage Authority while he was employed there. But is this any different to what we've seen over the years, whether it's in this government, other incarnations, other governments, that we've seen family members benefiting from contracts we have the whole uh, uh scenario with the attorney general and his family benefiting from contracts from the government so is this any different good morning to you minister and welcome to the program good morning natalie and good morning to your viewers good morning trinidad and tobago and thank you very much for having me and most importantly good morning to my beautiful constituency of lupino borneo west yes and i know today I'm is your constituency day i am here at their expense Yes, uh, thank you all very much to all the people of Lopino Bonnier. I promise you we'll have them. him out of here in good order so that you can get to keep your day with him. Good. Is thank it any much. different what we're seeing with uh, the whole idea that you say it's a conflict of interest with uh, Kim De Silva, Watson Duke's partner, having contracts on the Water and Surgery Authority and the Attorney General's family also benefiting from contracts from the government? Is there any difference? Well, I think there's a fundamental difference from my recollection without knowing all the details. Um, that contract that members of the public are referring to con in connection with the Attorney General and his family, I think that contract was awarded to um, the, the, the family when the PNM was out of office. It was when the People's Partnership was in government, um, they decided to enter into a contract for the rental of a building in Port of Spain. So when the PNM came into power, it is just more or less a continuation of an existing rental arrangement. So I, I think it is vastly different when what I'm reading in the papers um, this morning that Watson Duke, while is being an employee and continues to be an employee or a manager at the Water and Sewage Authority, um, the head of the Public Services um, Association representing Wasa workers and your wife getting contracts um, inside of, of the same Water and Sewage Authority, I think that is a gross, a gross conflict of interest and that is something that I think he has a lot to explain for. But you know there are segments of the population who believe that even with the Attorney General and the government, it is a conflict of interest as well. Whether the contract was awarded mm -hmm. under the People's National Movement or before, the fact is, at this point in time, as far as we know, the family of the Attorney General still continues to benefit from contracts from the government. Similarly to, you know, uh, Kim De Silva benefiting from contracts from the Water and Sewage Authority. Well, I, I understand the point you're making. Um, I understand the point that you're making, but I think it is vastly different because in the situation with the Attorney General, his wife and his family, they have legitimate companies and they, 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 they do business with the government, they do business with private sector, etc. And um, I think it is vastly different when one compares with what we are reading in the newspapers this morning that Watson Duke, being a senior employee of the Water and Sewage Authority and representing a significant segment of WASA workers, whilst being the head or a senior manager of the authority, your wife getting contracts with the organization, I think that is a gross conflict of interest and I can see the great disparity or the great difference when one compares the, the situation with the Attorney General whose wife got a contract under the previous government. In the case of this number one, Al Alexandra Street, and also? in the case of number one, Alexandra Street, I think what happened in this particular scenario was that there was a continuation of a rental agreement with um, with a building that, incidentally, the Ministry of Public Utilities head office is located. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is quite incidental. Yes, yeah, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, incidentally, but it is a continuation and um, right. of a of an existing rental arrangement. As a matter of fact, when from the facts, the limited facts that are available before me, when the, the, the government of the day entered into that contract with the, the company for well over three or four years, they were paying rent with all the, ve with all the, ve the, the, the building being in occupation. As a matter of fact, it is when the PNM came into, go into government recognizing that this building is being 
um, the, the state is being run for, decided to occupy um, that building. In the, in the mm. interest of the population and not, you know, putting the government in that position where people might think of yeah. this also being a conflict of interest, is it something, since the Ministry of Public Utilities is there, is it something that you all are considering, you know, coming out of that arrangement to say, okay, if we want to lead and if we want to have this kind of, these kinds of regulations or mm. want people to think about contracts in a particular way and not think about nepotism, is it something the government is considering to move away from? The government, um, the rental of property is always under constant review. You would recall when the, the, the previous Manning government invested a lot at the, the waterfront towers and some of the building that is that currently um, the, the Attorney General Office is located, Ministry of Legal Affairs, Ministry of Finance, Inland Revenue Division. Mm -hmm. It was all geared towards moving away from rental of private property um, to, to moving government departments in, in, in buildings owned by the government. And over the years, what we have seen is a constant reduction, a drastic reduction in the rent that government would normally pay to private property owners because government is investing in its own business, um, in its own property. Um, so with respect to that building, um, I think once there are, there are options available, you know, as what we have done in the past, the ministry will be moved out and moved to, to another location once something more feasible. But I can also tell you that the, the rent being paid for that building at number one Alexandra Street is quite competitive. As a matter of fact, we cannot identify any particular building that offers um, a rental um, arrangement that is more competitive. But I'm saying this is something that is constantly under review by the property and real estate division and if something feasible comes up, the government will also consider it. Right. I, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting to see what happens there yeah. because one of the things the population doesn't want is the government having one set of rules to one people and another set. So, you know, if it's, if it's Kim the Silver, then let us look at a conflict of interest. But if it's the Attorney General, then, you know, we can see, okay, well, this contract was entered into before. Because yeah. we could say the same thing with Kim. It was entered into uh, that contract a long time ago. No, there's no difference. It uh, was entered into while his husband was the PSA president and um, why he continues to be a manager. No, I think that it, it's not 2004, 2005, I think he when said he, that. When, they, when um, he led the, um, that, the PSA. That contract was He's been leading PSA for a very long time, from my recollection. 2011 is when he became president, or go. 2010. Yeah. I, when I just came here, when I read the newspaper, I realized it covers the period 2014 to 20. Which is under the, U, the the People's Partnership, so to speak. Anyways, yeah. that but we're not talking about that. Yeah. That, that is not important. Talk, that is not important. Let us talk about Wasa a little bit because you know we have the executive director here, and he sounds good, but then you all normally sound good. I think execution, and I'm very serious. I think execution because these things, a lot of times, on, when we're on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. it looks easy. Mm -hmm. But I know that the execution for organizational change is a difficult and tumultuous and up, up, up Mount Everest climb to Especially get that kind of change. when one is dealing with an organization like WASA. Yeah. Because WASA, you know, I look back at some of the, the hands that debate in the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago dating back to the 1970s and statements being made by the then Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, um, describing the state of affairs of the Water and Sewage Authority as some of the other utility companies. And this, the, the exact issues that he raised at that time in the 1970s, they continue to exist at this point in time, and perhaps they may have gotten worse. Pick up in. Yeah, Let sure. me ask you this. What do you think is responsible for that in this country? Where we could have a discussion in 1960, <laughs> 1970, and be having the exact discussion in 2020, 2021. I think we, as a country, we need to look at our very fundamentals as a Caribbean people coming out of the post-colonial era, and our understanding of what is the role of the state <coughs> what is the role of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago? What is the role of the private sector? Somewhere along the line, people were of the view that if you want to, to have a sustainable income, all you just need to do is get a government work and be less productive and be assured of a, an income at the end of the month and don't really care whether or not you produce or the organization functions in the way that it's supposed to function to deliver upon the goods and services to the people. It happens like that because at the end of the day, when those organizations don't function, people are not held to account. Who is held to account is the, the, the minister, because the minister is easy to blame. People don't get water in their taps. Nobody calls upon Watson Duke or the head of the NUGFW or the, the head of the, the, the CEO of WASA or the operations director or the financial manager. They are being paid 
to run an organization and rather being paid more than me. You might be amazed, you might be surprised about that. But when people don't get water in their taps, they call upon the minister and even call upon your resignation. The, 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 in, in the parliament, politicians play the fool and they file motions and they ask you questions to embarrass you based on what is taking place you know, in the companies under your ministry. But is that going to really address the fundamental problems that we really need to, um, to be addressing? We need to become very productive as a nation and we need to hold people to account. People who receive hefty and handsome salaries at the end of the month, we must call upon them to account and deliver. And if they, they, are, they are unable to do so, then they must face the consequences of it, be removed and put people who can, who can, who can manage. And what's the Duke has called for the workers of WASA, as well as other public servants, to stay away today, stay home. And that is take that sick day, yeah. take that, that, that COVID leaf, and this, and if you may. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate, because Watson Duke and they continue to, 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 um, to fight this union business that they are involved in as though we are operating in the 1950s and the 1960s. Times have changed. That posturing no longer bear fruit. Come to the table. So that why do you think the people voted for him again? Obviously, it must be bearing fruit. I mean, even if it was less than 2,000 votes, it was at least 1,200 votes more than his closest rival. Well, as I say, we have to look deep within ourselves and we have to ask ourselves, you know, what are the people, who do we put in charge of our own affairs? Do we put people like Watson Duke, who have all kinds of questions to answer, who are facing um, allegations of, I'm not saying that he, you know, he is guilty, but I'm saying that he's facing all kinds of um, allegations of sexual misconduct before the courts. I, t I can tell you that as a member of the People's National Movement, I would not have been able to walk through the doors of Balize House if I, if I was faced with all these allegations. I would have been, I would, I, and, and all the opinion writers and the writers in the media and, and the, 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 the national validators and all these people who like to expose themselves as the bastion of integrity. What are they saying about that? Does Watson Duke represent our children? Are we holding him up as someone who represents the values of this nation? They Do you are, think they, the they, in they are silent. And stop with Watson Duke? No, 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 of course not. I think Watson Duke is the least of my problem. I don't regard Watson Duke as anything. I, yes, I respect him as the, the leader of the PSA, but his posturing and his runs and his, and, and his no, loud noise, it is, not going to be, it is not going to distract me. I am not going to be distracted by that. All I am concerned about is getting the management and getting the Water and Sewage Authority in a place where it can deliver portable, reliable water to the people of this country. Whatever it takes will be done. Because at the end of the day, if WASA does not perform, people are going to call for my head, and perhaps rightly so. So therefore, I have a mandate from the Prime Minister and from the government and from the people of this country who voted for the PNM last year, um, August um, 2020, general elections. And we have a mandate to fix the Water and Sewage Authority as any other state entity, because we are m moving out of this um, COVID-19 pandemic and the new era we must focus on productivity. Oil and gas, we are not making enough money out of it anymore, and therefore we have to become productive as a nation. And all I'm doing is seeking, and I intend on making the Water and Sewage Authority an agency that produces and that can provide a reliable water supply and sewage services to the people of this country. 489 managers in an, in an organization. 424. 424 managers in an organization that's supposed to have 172 according to the structure and size of the organization. As a minister, do you have the authority to fire or to, to change or to remove some of those managers? Because as Watson Duke said, as you've pointed out in the, in, in the, in the report to the subcommittee, the mm -hmm. cabinet subcommittee, it is really top heavy. It is top heavy, the cabinet sub subcommittee. Um, determined that. We've looked at previous reports that were done um, into the operations of the Water and Sewage Authority, and they all come to the same conclusion, that the organization is top heavy, it is unwieldy, it is unproductive. Yeah, but can you change that? Well, Do you have the authority uh, no, no, to no, no. go in and say, okay, there are 424 managers, as, as the minister, I need to just shave it down to 172? Oh, no, no, no. As minister, that is not my role and that is not my responsibility, even though the Act, the Water and Sewage Authority Act, um, it provides that that executives in WASA must, before they employ it, it mu they must receive the, the approval of the Minister of Public Utilities. I can tell you, all these people have been employed in WASA. I have not seen any approval. 
by the line minister. But I'm not going on that road. No, but on that basis, if there aren't any approvals, can what? Well, is they're employed. That can we can't go just back. be dismissed we, we if there are no approvals I'm, in place? That can't just be reversed because you're talking about people who are employed in, in, in these positions for years. And um, so the court will not allow the government or allow the minister to reverse it simply because they, um, they, they didn't have the approval of the minister, the line minister, of the, or, or the CPU or, or the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago. So how do you what treat bothers me, such a situation? What bothers me is that the organization um, is functioning with an organizational chart that is outside of the one that is approved by cabinet. And, and uh, you're talking about two, two or 3,000 workers employed in an organization with no job description outside of the organizational framework. So we come and back to the whole issue mm -hmm. of accountability, Minister. Who is going to be held accountable for that? Because if you have two to 3,000 people within the Water and Sewage Authority, no job description, don't know what they're doing there, but somebody's paying them, somebody's signing that check, and there are 424 managers, at least 200 more than is necessary. Who is going to fix that? And I don't know that it needs the transformation under Dr. Lennox Seeley to look at that particular issue. When the, the government and when the cabinet sat um, to examine the outcome of this report and the recommendation, and when I had my discussions with the Honorable Prime Minister recognizing the state of affairs of the organization, it is in that context we decided to appoint Dr. Seeley, who was at the, at the point in time just the chairman of the Board of Commissioners. It is in that context the cabinet decided to appoint him as an executive director with the necessary power to work with an executive team to drive the transformation that is needed to make the organization functional and to make the organization productive and to make the organization produce upon its mandate in accordance with the Water and Sewage Authority Act. So the decision to appoint him as an executive director as well as a deputy executive director, which is yet to be filled, all right, it, it was taking all these things into consideration. What has to be done? Because we recognize the organization was like an old ship adrift in a vast sea of public disaffection and dissatisfaction. and decisive action needs to be taken in order to bring that ship to a safe harbor. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we did it. Do you believe the mm -hmm. biggest issue we have in the Water and Surge Authority is human resource? I know we, we know we have the production and the infrastructure yeah, and no. the capacity, but do you believe that the biggest issue there is the human resource? Actually, no. Human resource is one main issue. But you have the issue of water production. Wasa is not producing enough water, even though... But Wasa's production is higher linked, than is most linked to, places to, to, in to the human Caribbean. Resource, yeah? Three times that of Jamaica, three times that of Barbados, and yet we seem to be using more water than these other countries, but less people are getting. That's if you believe the data. I have some serious questions about the data that is being espoused by the Water and Sewage Authority, especially when your, um, your meters at your main production plants are not, are not functioning or they, they are not working. Just, just about 40 or 50 percent of your meters, your bulk meters are working. So what is the basis upon which you're yeah. And only 4 percent of the population is really metered. metered. Yeah, you understand? But Dr. Seeley told me that that's yeah. something that's on the so cards uh, for WASA. We metering. need to agree on baseline, on baseline information. And these numbers that WASA has been espousing over the years and even previous ministers with the greatest of respect for them, I need to tell them, hold up, or as the young people say, pat down. You understand? <laughs> let us so are we going get, to be looking at another feasibility study or something to see what's happening with it? We have within. to get the necessary technology, understand where we are in the water and sewage authority and the water sector, and let us use these baseline figures to be able to map the strategy forward. So human resource, I agree with you. It is a fundamental issue. It is not the only main issue. You're looking at your, the state of your plants and the, the, the state of your machinery. Most of the water treatment plants around the country are functioning below their maximum capacity, not because there isn't enough water, but it is because the, the machinery and the pumps are in a state of disrepair. So that is an issue. The use of technology. I'm telling you something. If there's a water disruption on Marva Road now, it is only when people call TTT now you'll know. That, that I will know as a minister or the operations director or the CEO or Dr. Seeley. Because there is no technology that will give or highlight the, the fact that there is a particular disruption in a particular area of the country 
so that decisive action can be taken you send out a team or what have you minister we are out of time but Harry, do you i know how to talk <laughs> <laughs> i know how it is when you're having fun but you, you pull me you pull me away from loop you know bonnie west to just interview me for 10 minutes no ask them how long we've been on so far okay fine. about 23. are you serious yeah wow. uh <laughs> Do you believe that Marvin Gonzalez will be vindicated at the end of this all? Because people don't like change. And yeah. when you have to institute change, normally there's a political price to pay. So do you believe that this that you're trying to do at the Water and Surge Authority, and even as Minister of Public Utilities, that it will redound to your benefit in the long run? Oh, actually, this is not about me. This is not about Marvin Gonzalez, the Minister of Public Utilities. This is all about doing what is necessary so that the people of this country can have water flowing through the Do you think the taps. people understand that? I think the people fully understand that, and I think they fully appreciate that it is going to take difficult decisions for WASA to produce and to turn around the organization. Yet the so people that's in WASA today are focus. saying, some of them in WASA say they're staying home. Let me tell you this, I don't believe that, eh? because I'm not only talking to the executives in WASA, I'm not only talking to Dr. Sidi, I have a beautiful re relationship with him, I have a wonderful relationship with him, but the difference between Dr. Sidi or what is common with both of us is that we go down to the organization. We talk to the security guard. We talk to the, op the operators. We talk to the engineers. We talk to people at the various level, and we understand what is, it, what is happening. And the beautiful thing and the great thing, I can assure you and the people of this country, we have encountered a number of employees within the Water and Sewage Authority who are committed to working with us to turn around that organization. And I'm heartened by that. All right, Minister, let us hope that you are right. Let's hope that you are right and what's the duty is wrong and that the people at the Water and Surge Authority will be out in their numbers today, what's doing the their work and being efficient and productive. What's well, the Minister, duty is not a factor. Thank you so building. much. And <laughs> to your constituents, please tell them we here at the No Morning Show say good morning to all of them. <laughs> yes, and we appreciate their patience in allowing you to be with us here before you go and sit That's and chat I'm with them. I'm going to spend the day with them now. Yes. Thank you very much for having me. You're most welcome. Minister of Public Utilities, Marvin Gonzalez there. We are going to take a break and we'll be back with you shortly. Mm -hmm.